Hi, my name is Penny and I'm the pastor of Trinity United Methodist Church here in Tuscaloosa. Today is Good Friday and it's the day when we remember that Jesus was crucified on the cross. Now I remember as a kid thinking, why do we call it Good Friday? I mean, there's nothing good about an innocent man being executed. There's nothing good about our Savior dying on the cross. When we read the crucifixion story of Jesus, there's so many emotions that come up. Emotions like, like sadness and fear and anxiety and, and anger and pain. And those are not usually emotions that we're comfortable expressing. You know, somebody will come up to you and say, how are you doing? And no matter what, we say, oh, I'm good, I'm good. How about you? How are you doing? It's a lie. You know, we are all struggling this week. A lot of folks are having a difficult time. If you go down to the food bank, the lines are really long. If you talk to a healthcare worker, they are really stressed out. Teachers are missing their students. Students are missing their friends. High school seniors are missing their prom and their graduation. Parents are just overwhelmed. Folks are worried about their jobs, about their finances, about their future, about their health. I know for me, I've been really sad this week about not being able to see my mom. Now my mom is in a great retirement home and she's doing fine. And I understand the rules about no visitors and um, I, I appreciate that, I agree with that. But it's so hard not to be able to sit down with her and, and have a meal or just sit down face to face and have a talk. We are all struggling in some way. Did you know that the Bible is filled with stories of people who are struggling? People who are scared or angry or confused, crying out to God. There's a whole book in the Bible called Lamentations. It's one long lament, a pouring out of sorrow and pain. Um, there's also a lot of Psalms that, that express feelings of anger and, and abandonment and fear, all of those things that we sometimes feel. And they do it with such honesty and such passion. Jesus himself quoted Psalm 22 when he was on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. Today on Good Friday, it's a good day to cry out to God. Today is a good day to give voice to our own pain and suffering, remembering a Savior who knew what it was to be in pain and to hurt and to grieve. To remember a Savior who stands with us when we are hurting. Good Friday is a good time to pour out all of these emotions, to pause and to allow ourselves to feel deeply all of those things that we hide just below the surface, just behind a brave face or a put on smile. Today is a good day to trust that God is big enough to handle all of your emotions. How do you express your lament? How do you express those deepest emotions? Maybe you find a safe space and you cry. Or maybe you write it all down in a diary or a notebook. Maybe you have a good friend that you can call and just pour out your heart on the phone. Maybe you pick up a pencil or a paintbrush and you write a poem or you paint a picture. Maybe you put on some music and you dance it out. Through it all, we trust that God is big enough to handle all of those emotions, even the ones we try to hide. And if today you can't find the words to express your emotions, I invite you to read through the book of Lamentations or start flipping through the book of Psalms and you will find a psalm that speaks the words of your heart. In 70 AD, the Romans destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. The only thing left standing was one of the outer walls that was considered too insignificant to even bother to destroy. Well, through the centuries, that has become a wall of prayer, 
called the Western Wall or the Wailing Wall. And people from all over the world come and they write their prayers on a piece of paper and they'll either roll it up or they'll fold it and they'll stick it in one of the cracks of the walls. And by doing that, they join with other worshipers from all over the world of different faiths, lifting up their deepest prayers to God as one people. Now we don't have a wailing wall, but we do have a Facebook page. And so maybe if you see this video on Facebook, you want to write your prayer or your lament in the comments on our Facebook page. And if you do that, I promise that I will hold those prayers and I will lift them up with you and for you. Or if you want to be more private, you are welcome to, to message me your prayer or email me or call me or text me. And I will pray with you whatever prayers are on your heart. You know, when we express our lament, it keeps it from turning into bitterness and hopelessness. Letting it all out, putting it on the table, helps keep us from internalizing it. It helps to take away its sting. To know that we join with people of faith, it reminds us that, that we are not alone in our grief or our anger or our worry. That God is with us even in these difficult times and that we are not alone. You know, Paul wrote, we do not grieve as others who have no hope. All of this that we pour out, we do with the hope and the assurance of Jesus Christ. You know, the ending of Psalm 22 is this. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction or the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. Today, on this Good Friday, we cry out to God, trusting that God hears our every prayer. Will you join with me as we listen to the crucifixion story and as we lay our own prayers at the foot of Jesus?
Hear the Passion reading from the book of Matthew, chapters 26 and 27. Then the soldiers of the governors took Jesus into the praetorium, and they gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe upon him. And planting a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and put a reed in his right hand, and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat upon him, and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, and put his own clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. This man they compelled to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests, which the scribe and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of the bystanders, hearing it, said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with vinegar, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come and save him. And Jesus cried again in a loud voice, and he yielded up his spirit. Were you there? Tremble, tremble. 